life together to think and as we get ready for the next phase of our children's ministry. So I want to welcome our children here with us. Children, thank you for being here with us.
fellowship. Spiritually speaking, the enemy is out to destroy us. He's doing whatever he can to sink our ships. He'll do whatever he can to just get in the way. And the thing about this is that the enemy, you're, it's like you're there. You're there in life, and it just feels like it's you and the devil. You and the enemy. Trying to strategize. Man, I gotta get this enemy. I gotta knock him out. And the enemy's trying to do the same thing to you. Because the enemy just wants to knock you out. When I think about this, there's different ships that the enemy wants to knock out in our lives. You see the, the, the carrier, the aircraft carrier, you know, I think about our families. Because the aircraft carrier carries a bunch of planes and, and the Navy's there and a bunch of different things are on there. And the enemy wants to bring down, wants to sink your family. I think about the submarine, and the submarine is it's a special type of, uh, of boat, but it goes under the water and, and it's hard to be tracked. But one thing that the enemy wants to attack is called prayer life. Our prayer life is a submarine. Why? Because we go down and we surrender to God. One of the things that the enemy tries to bring down as well as we call the battleship, which, which I speak of, which I believe is our relationship with God, he'll try to destroy that. It's the enemy got into your battleship, into your relationship with God. But what about the destroyer? Do you know that God is giving you a gift, an anointing, a power, that if you begin to use it, you can practice victory and see victory in your life? The enemy is out to destroy your ministry, your gifting. The last one that I look at that the enemy likes to try to go after is the tugboat. Now you know what the tugboat is. This, you know, right? It's the smallest of all these boats. It, it seems like whenever the, the aircraft carrier is broken and going through something, that tugboat is the one that's pushing it to victory, pushing it back so it can get fixed. When I look at the tugboat, I think about worship. Because worship always something that's small. It don't matter what you're going through. But if you worship, it'll bring you to your victory. Amen. It'll bring Amen. you to your breakthrough. I'm going to thank God today for worship. Amen. The, enemy, the enemy wants to go after your worship. He wants to attack your ships. Your worship, your fellowship, your discipleship, your stewardship, your leadership, your membership, your pastorship, your workmanship, your partnership, your eldership, your courtship, your ownership, your rulership, your kingship, your lordship, and finally, he's after your sonship. He wants to go after your family. He wants to go after your identity. And he'll do whatever he can to find that thing. Yeah. Where are you? In your walk. In your relationship with God. Paul says, for though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. For the weapons we fight are not the weapons of this world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. Why? Because most of our battles is here. Amen. Most of the battles and the things that we go through is in our mind. And so why do we go through these things? Why do we go through these struggles? Why, do, why are many of us facing it? Because this is basically what it is. Because these thoughts are, 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 are which the enemy calls to be strongholds in our lives. Some of us got some battles that we're going through in our lives. And they're strongholds. These things are holding you captive. They, they got you down. They think they have you down for the count. Within our thinking, we have given Satan strongholds. And the devil holds them. And you know what happens is these battles are so real that they, they become defense mechanisms for our lives. You know the battles? Sometimes those battles are so big that you begin to defend yourself. Because you don't want nobody to know the truth about 
your battle. And so all of a sudden, one of your defense mechanisms is dishonesty. All because you want to protect yourself from anybody knowing the truth about you. Denial is a defense mechanism. We go through defense mechanisms, uh, uh, a kind of subconscious refusal to accept the world the way it really is. In our world, in certain ways, and some of us, we are going through issues and things and battles in our lives, but we're in a constant denial. How about fantasy? Some of the battles that we have are fantasies to escape the real world and live in one's imagination. Some of us are in a battle. We're in an imagination. Everything has been a fantasy item for us. How about emotional insulation? To withdraw from others to avoid rejection. Some of us got some battles that we're going through and it's just emotional and we isolate ourselves from everybody. And sometimes these battles cause us to regress a little bit. And we go back because we don't want to, we, we were going forward, we were doing well, but now these battles are so much that we regress and we go back. And then, can anybody understand what I'm talking about? Amen. And then we get to a place of displacement to take anger and frustration out on other people. Because the battle has been so much, they don't understand what we're going through. They don't know what we're going at. What's going on? And some of us, we have these battles. And so the defense mechanisms that I'm talking about become strongholds that the enemy will use to control your life. It's like we're here battling, and we're battling with the enemy. But well, let me tell you something. This fight sometimes is not even the enemy. It's even within. And so sometimes it's us here, and we think it's the enemy there. But it's not really us here and the enemy there. It's us here. And us here. It's us battling with ourselves. Hello. Some of us are battling with our own twin. That's what this is, but we're just spiritual. Twin. And you're battling. And it seems like you're right all the time. The good and the bad. You're bad, you're right all the time. Kind of reminds me of the story of two men who lived in a small village. They got into a terrible dispute and they could not resolve the issue. So they went and found the judge in the community to speak to the judge. And the first man went to the, to the judge's home and told his version of what happened. And so when he finished, the judge told him, you're absolutely right. The next night, the second man called on the judge and, and told him his side of the story. And the judge responded, you're absolutely right. Afterward, the judge's wife was absolutely upset, and she's like, she scolded the judge. She says, "Husband, you can't do that. These these men, you told both of these, they both have different stories, and you told them both that they were absolutely right. That's impossible. They can't both be absolutely right." The judge turned to his wife and he said, "You're absolutely right." <laughs> We have that same type of conflict today. We think we're right when we're wrong. We try to convince ourselves to follow. To uh, there's a yearning, there are wants. And, you know, Tommy Lasorda said this. The former Los Angeles Dodgers coach, he manager said this when he's battling the inner self. He says, "I took a pack of cigarettes from my pocket. I stared at it and I said, who's stronger, you or me? The answer was me, and I." Stopped smoking. Then I took some vodka martini and I said, who's stronger, you or me? And all of a sudden I said, me, I'm stronger than the martini and the vodka. Then I took some chuleta con gum. <laughs> some pork chops. <laughs> and the pork chop talked to me. Who's stronger, you or me? <laughs> Hello. Because <laughs> how many know there are some battles you are good at, but then there's others. Hello. <laughs> Why is it that we can win some battles, but not every battle? 
Life isn't the one thing I can overcome, but something as small as a tuleta can overcome me. For those who don't understand Spanish, tuleta in English, chalela. <laughs> Thank you know what? 
the story in Genesis chapter 26. There's, there's a story of this, this man and this woman, a husband and a wife. And you know what? They're, the enemy is after all of his ships. Because you know what? Let me tell you something that the enemy will, will do whatever he can to, to get on us. He'll attack us. And he'll go through something. In Genesis 26, Isaac and Rebecca, they find themselves in a mess. They're going through some issues. They're going through some problems in their life. But let me tell you something about, the, about these things, these, this adversity and battles that we go through. Can I tell you two truths? Truth number one, through our battles, we have profound growth. Because now we see things that we didn't see before. And now it's kind of like I go through this, this battle, but when I out of the battle, it's like I learned something I didn't know before about me, about my situation, or maybe about somebody else. The second thing that's a blessing out of these battles is that it provides us with the opportunity, the opportunity to do something either good or bad, but there's an opportunity for us. Now look at this. There are five things that we learn, that we see in the scripture, that we learn about adversity and battles and how we can thrive through these battles in our own battleship when I look at Genesis chapter 26. And look what it says. Let me read it to you. It says, now there was a famine in the land beside the previous famine in Abraham's time. And Isaac went, with, went to Abimelech, king, king of the Philistines in Gerar. The Lord appeared to Isaac and said, do not not go down to Egypt. Live in the land where I tell you to live. Stay in the land for a while, and I will be with you. I will bless you, for to you and your descendants, I will give all these lands and will confirm the oath I swore to your father Abraham. I will make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and will give them all these lands and through your offspring all nations of earth will be blessed because Abraham obeyed me and did everything I required of him keeping my commandments, my decrees, my instructions. So Isaac stayed in Gerard. Guys, if we're going to overcome, if we're going to thrive through battles, we need to understand this, that God gives us promises. You know, what, you know what's awesome about this? Is that God is giving him a promise before the battle begins. God gave Isaac the promise. Before he got into a battle. Think that's something. God wants you and I to understand that there's victories in the promise of his word. Because he knows that if you and I get into the word. And relate to the word and read the word. That that word is sufficient to get us through whatever battle we're about to have. Amen. 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 And some of us, we haven't been reading our Bibles We've been, we've been failing to read the promises of God. And that's why some of us, we keep going on and on with certain issues. And some of us have been running away from certain issues in our lives because we don't know how to get through it. Well, you're not going to get through it if you don't understand the promises of God. Because the promises of God are given to us so that we can get through this temporary time. He said this, stay there a while. Stay there a while. He gave him a promise. God gives us his promise. God is giving us his word so that we can understand it, so that we can receive it. And God gave it to him, man. God, not only did God give it to him, but this is a sovereign plan of God. God wants him to understand this. But let's continue to read. Check this out. Verse 5. Because they brought up verse 6. When the men of that place asked him about his wife, he said, she is my sister, because he was afraid to say, she is my wife. He thought, he what? He what? Because the battle starts right here. He thought, 
what he says. Look what he thought. Where did I go? <laughs> he thought in verse 7. He goes, he thought the man of this place might kill me on account of Rebecca because she is beautiful. Brother man, A truth he wanted to hide, so it caused him to be dishonest. There are some things about us, some truths about us, that we try to hide. And so we say, well, I'll do a little, little white lie. So I can be good and say, nobody, nobody can say anything. And all of a sudden, it puts us in a big old mess. When I was reading this, it reminds me of his father. Father Abraham did the same exact thing. Isn't that something that his father struggled with the same type of fear? Because there are some battles that are generational. And they go from father to son, daughter, to mother, father, son, daughter. They can be from grandpa or ancestors going on. And it won't stop until somebody actually steps up to it and says, it will stop here. Amen. And some of us are going through some battles that it's not just your own battle. It's your dad's battle, your mom's battle, your grandma's battle, your ancestor's battle, and your ancestor's 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 battle. It's been going on to seven to eight to nine generations, and you're wondering, why am I going through this? Because nobody has stepped up to the plate. Somebody needs to know the promise. And number two, somebody needs to face the issue. God allowed this to happen. God allowed our eyes to go through a situation. God gave him a promise, hoping that he would believe in the promise and not struggle with fear. But because of fear, because of fear, he would lose his wife. Fear for his life. Fear. I don't care. But it's a fear that when I look at my children, I'm enjoying my 
my children. I can't enjoy my children because I'm looking at them and I'm thinking, what would happen if I'm not here? And all of a sudden, I'm playing with them and, and we're, we're supposed to be enjoying going to the zoo, but I'm looking at them and as I'm looking at them, thinking, what if, what if I was to get sick? And I was, why am I thinking this? He's so terrible to me. I couldn't sleep. I, 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 I was struggling with anxiety. My wife was telling me, it was one of the nights, it was three, four, three weeks ago, I, I got up and I told my wife, I said, baby, you're pray for me, man. I can't sleep. I've got this anxiety. This, so much is going on through my mind. And I, I want to do this thing. I want to do the right thing. But this thing is, is taking over me. Why, why is this a real battle, church? It's a battle I'm going through. Amen. It's a battle. It's a real battle. You know, the, you know what the other battle is? That we turn put on this facade like everything's all right. Like I'm strong. When people don't understand the room, then I was invited to go and, and preach at a men's conference, and, 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 the, and the conference was called I Dare You. And I was thinking about it, I can't even speak, I'm going through this. And I'm there, I'm in New Life, I'm sitting down in a meeting, they're asking me to speak, and every now and then, we know that God can use you, and I'm like, I'm thinking like that. I need to go. I need to go. I need to talk to somebody. I gotta expose the enemy, man. But man, if I do this and I talk to somebody, they're gonna think I'm weak, and now they're not gonna use me to speak because they're gonna think I can't speak. I, I gotta know everything. I gotta be right. So I said, no. So I talked to one of the guys. I said, man, Justin, if you go in there, he just paid for me, man. I'm going through I'm, I'm struggling with fear and fear of death. Larry, you're not the only one, man. He's talking about that too. Because when you go through your battle, you think you're the only one going through it. And nobody understands. And that's a lie. Because why? It's happening right here. The enemy's whispering. The enemy's talking to you. And he's telling you, don't tell nobody. Because you got to look at you different. You're a pastor. You're a leader. You're the husband.
ourselves. Yeah. Some of us have been yeah. messing around with grace so much, looking at it like it's a toy, and all of a sudden we're going through some issues. It's not the devil. It's God allowing you because he wants to smack you so you can wake up. Amen. That's right. He gives you a vocal vessel and a vocal vessel and a night vessel. <laughs> because he loves you. He wants to wake you up. He wants you to understand some things. So church, understand this. Sometimes the enemy's after you and sometimes you're after yourself. Somebody got to wake up. Then they dug another well, but they quarreled 
over the one also, so he named it Sidna. There were good wells. One was dispute, and the other one was opposition. Some of us, we go through some disputes, but that's okay, it's good. It's leading to opposition. And opposition sometimes is good, because it's leading to the next one. We read the next one. Then they dug another well, and they quarreled over, the, over one also, so he named it Sitna. He moved on from there and dug another well, and no one quarreled over it. He named it Rehoboth, saying, now the Lord has given us room, and he will flourish in the land. <laughs> when you speak the course, and you do not listen to the people talking around you, when you have your eyes on doing what's right with God, you'll get through this, you'll get through disputes, you'll get through this position, but it's because God is preparing a place where there's nothing but room for blessings for you. Amen. That's what God wants you to be. God is saying, well, you just follow me. Your battles are hard. Your battles are growing strong. But if you continue to move forward, if you look to the left and to the right, I'm going to give you enough blessing that will make much room for you. And no one's going to quarrel with you. Wait to see the reading. From there, he went up to Beersheba. Verse 23. That night the Lord appeared to him and said, I am the God of your father Abraham. Do not be afraid, for I am with you. I will bless you and will increase the number of your descendants for the sake of my servant Abraham. Isaac built an altar there and called on the name of the Lord. There he pitched his tent, and there his servants dug a well. You know what he did? In the midst of his battle, Because your worship will cause you room. Worship will give you victory. Amen. Amen, it does. The other night, it was like 2 in the morning. And I went by the time I was getting to my hospital. And I grabbed my phone. And I put on the song.
worship of God in the midst of my battle. And I want to invite you to stand. If today you've got some battles that you're facing, 